Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a brand new campaign in Kaiserreich. Normally, I haven't played a lot of Kaiserreich at the time of this recording, but welcome back to Kaiserreich. So we're playing as the Ottoman Empire, led by Abdul Mesed II, and I'll be honest, like this campaign, I have no idea what's going to happen. The Ottoman Empire has been reworked, so this is the Focus Tree, in which we can't really do too much right now. If you see the right side... Everything's pretty much locked behind everything besides expand the education ministry. Fighting an uphill battle ever since the revolution in 1908, the topic of education is of the utmost importance to the OHF. Significant steps have been made in this regard, especially on the matter of co-education, but the decentralization of the Ottoman education system remains a thorn in the side. With the upcoming co-education and unification decree, these will be annihilated in one fell swoop. We get the event of a vote on the education decree, and failure to push through the education decree could have severe consequences. I don't know what that's going to mean, or really happens, because, like I said, I'm going in completely blind for this campaign. I don't know what's going to happen, and honestly, I think I've tried to play as the Ottoman Empire once, before got an update in Kaiserreich, but I, it's been so long. I've already set up all this stuff. I've already set up the Navy to be re reorganized. I've already set up the armies, you can tell, and that's pretty much why I decided... To not do what I traditionally do on this channel, because I normally show you like me at the home screen, selecting which country we'll play as, seeing if we custom game rules on, but it's Kaiserreich, everything set to the default, nothing different, so I have no idea what's going to happen. But, the Ottoman Empire before the vote Krieg. Uh, if you don't want to hear me read about this, just skip like a minute into the video, but I'm going to read this. The Empire, Ottoman Empire, one of the greatest empires in the history, saw its decline commenced in the late 18th century, developing to the point of being known as the sick man of Europe by the early 20th century. An inability to effectively industrialize, constant foreign meddling in its affairs, and a troubling hold on a lot of its provinces meant that the Ottoman Sultanate had fallen back well behind the European powers by 1876. Nevertheless, the Ottomans reformed, and despite the issues these posed, these posed on a local level, where tribal issues and a corrupt bureaucracy reigned supreme, light could be seen. Prompted by Mahmud III in the early 19th century, and further pursued by the young Ottomans, radical changes were introduced in the empire. Land ownership was restructured, the Janissaries eradicated, central rule re-established in regions such as Mosul and al hasa and a constitution promulgated promulgated. The focus of these reformers was based on the idea of Ottomanism, and attempted to foster a common identity for all of its inhabitants besides their local one. It would not be enough, though. With Abdul Mahid II's the rise to the power, a change would come once more. Under the pretext of the Russo-Turkish War, the constitution was abolished and parliament sent packing. This period saw a radical centralization of power under the figure of the Sultan Caliph. With a constant threat by Christian powers, the Sultan turned inwards towards pan-Islamism, Islamism, uh, based on the prestige of the Caliphate, despite enjoying great success from the Muslim population. This would only hasten the departure of the territories without these. Uh, cool. Furthermore, his absolute rule fostered great discontent amongst a population which increasingly became familiar with Western ideas. This resistance would consolidate itself in the shape of Committee of Union and Progress. A coup d'etat in 1908 made the Ottoman politics, long suppressed by the Sultan, burst into the open. Dozens of parties would attempt to find a seat within the newly restored parliament as it seemed that Ottoman decline was finally at its end. The United Democratic Forces would not last and saw a quick, quickly saw a split between the decentralists and the centralists. Through a tumultuous five years, these two sides would battle for control in 1913 with the raid on the Sublime Port. The game was up. The centralists, with as significant public figures, the three Pashas, would eradicate all remaining power of the decentralists and shape the nation in their image. Under great threat by the imperialists, they ultimately strengthened ties with Germany. Interesting. Skip to 1931. Let me just play already. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh. I guess it's part one of two. I guess, on second thought, if you want, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. I like the lore and all, but sometimes we, we just want to push ahead into, into the game. This is not TNO. It's not the New Order, Last Days of Europe. So, here's the second part. Page three for us. So, interesting. Interesting. And, oh, Empire, the Ottoman Empire after the Velkrieg. I just want to make Ottoman Empire great again. The O-E. Yeah, O-E. Ottoman Empire. Interesting. And then, uh, Ottoman after, Empire after the Velkrieg. Cool. Interesting. And we have resistance already. What the heck? Well then. Civilian oversight is always good to choose. I don't think we have anything unique here. Yeah, nothing unique. Not like reconciliation. Like in base Hoi 4, if you have the battle for the Bosphorus DLC, that one gives you uh, unique decisions on the Kurdish territories to help put down resistance and such. Oh, we don't have enough military police, huh? Oh, actually, I did not mess with this at all. That is probably not ideal. So you guys go and do that. I'm going to... Let's go down by one, so at least we can make something here. I totally didn't even do any of this stuff. My bad. 
Alright, so we can read this one. The Ottoman economy in 1936, aftermath of the infamous decade. When the first dust settled in 1920, and there finally came to an end to almost a decade of non-stop war. The economy of the Ottoman Empire lay in tatters. The manufacturing economy, which had seen a slow but steady growth in the CUP era, was knocked down as the effects of the Armenian genocide took their toll on the educated middle class. Doctors, engineers, entrepreneurs, etc. all became critical jobs as the continued exodus by Greek Ottoman citizens in Asia Minor showed how devastating the national economy plan was to the ravaged nation. In a similar way, the agricultural sector was ruined as the real effects of the war began to sink in. The loss of the Anatolian Turkish population was mind-boggling at almost 25% of the pre-war population was gone, leaving behind an abundance of land without the manpower to work it. Nonetheless, the sublime port did not sit idle and plans for a swift recovery were quickly drafted as the first post-war cabinet made it their number one priority. Railroads, left behind by investors of, of nations no longer existing, were nationalized. The dreaded OD OPDA was completely shut down and its monopolies transferred over to the state. The National Economy Program became the number one priority of the Ottoman Empire, or the government, as the horrors of the war and reliance on the untrustworthy non-Turkish population left deep scars amongst the ruling elite. A Muslim bourgeoisie had to be groomed to challenge the traditional Christian dominance of people educated and Empire finally launched into the 20th century. Grand plans, but little resources. Very cool, an era of growth, and I do have a cup of coffee here who's already half drunk to keep us nice and energized. As the years ticked by and the economy reached its pre-war state by the late 1920s, then the then ruling OHF took development to the next level. That's a sequence of the four year plans were laid on the table, and the hold of the government on the economy was tightened even further. Then in 31, the unthinkable happened as a national or nationalist coalition was decisively brought down by the liberal Entente who opened or reopen the economy to foreign investment and tone down the etatis measures. So carefully crafted in the decade before, nonetheless, the economy kept expanding as industry propped up or popped up across all of Anatolia and the Levant, financed by almost an almost never-ending wave of economic prosperity in the German Empire and the low import cost for machinery and building materials. By the middle of the 30s, the Turkish economy had never seen better days, as a feeling of euphoria and progress could be felt from Beirut to Sin Smyrna. Nevertheless, or nonetheless, many have pointed out warning signs on the horizon as increasing stability on the continent and the stagnation of the German economy will likely bring issues to the Grand Orient as well. Praise the Devlet I Ibed Mudit, Eternal State. Cool. Let's not screw up here. We need a lot of things. Assassination of President Kerensky, how barbaric. That, what? That's, 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 that's radical. That never happens. We're just out of guns. Okay, so what states do we not have control over? Besides a lot of states. Because we don't have a lot of control. Greece. Huh. Education debate in the Miklis e Mebusan. The fight over the minds and spirits of the population have been vigorously fought over the last few decades as the unrelenting pace of modernization has also greatly affected this field. Started deep into the 19th century, the reforms have progressed in a steady progression over the years, mostly carried by the secularist movement. The OHF has continued this conflict post Valkyrie, with the first the participation of women in higher education and official full co-education only a few years later, promoted by Sultan Vadedtin. Nonetheless, the policy is finding it hard to be fully implemented on the ground as heavy opposition from the conservative Ulema and the continued split in the various education systems that make any centralization hard to accomplish. Ulema? Is that from EU4? Huh. I don't know anything about... I don't know that much about Turkey or the Ottoman Empire. Regardless, the Ottoman education system, consisting of three main branches, remains divided, and even though the Idadi and the Sultani the reformist schools established by the Tanzimat reforms have been united into one distinct curriculum, the Medrasses. Uh, religious education and minority schools, protected by the millet system, remain a thorn in the side of the Ministry of National Education, long being a staple of the OHF. It, is a detailed, it has detailed its plans to unite all three systems, a place them directly under the Ministry, and to streamline the curriculum to both promote social cohesion, cohesion and make it more approachable to the common citizen over the last few years, though, primarily during the first tenure in 1927. Massive strides were made towards accomplishing this goal, but the subsequent decentralist government of 1931 has overturned this policy once more in favor of education on a vilayet level, as such causing a divide in both the quality and accessibility of education depending on efforts of the Wawali. Wawali. Now that the OHF is firmly back in the saddle, it's brought to the table the sum of its designs, the Co-Education and Unification Act, finally putting to law the full unification of education in the entire realm and the forced co-education of males and females. The party has found itself up against a wall of conservative forces funded by the powerful Sufi lodges in an attempt to prevent their power over the government to fade. Changes in the air? Oh, we got political power! Nice! Awesome, awesome, and have some coffee. And it would be the Kurds who don't like us. Oh, and the Emirate, the Serenica, we have, yeah, Serenica, well, actually, it's, it's kind of cool, the update, because Serenica has a unique focus tree, so when do I play Serenica? I don't know, the Serenican Revolution, the Return of Etheris, as well as Jabal Shamar, oh, I love that hat, or his headpiece, the Merchant Princess of Hal Halil, Hal 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 I have no idea, no idea, and we also have 
the Mutasarefate of Jerusalem. He's led by bald dude, Isat Sagai. Sagay. Sagai. I would like to play as the Kingdom of Jerusalem. How are we, how are we get there? But man, what do we have? The Turtles Charter? What about the crazies? Crazy folks. That's not cool. Oh, King Edward Crown as King of those people. <sighs> really, guys? Why do you have to rebel against us? Or not have good times with us? Come on, man. Kurt and Kurds. Come on, Kurds. Hmm. Well, coffee's already gone. How are we already 10 minutes into this video already? Uh, so, like I said before, I played as an Ottoman Empire in my own time in Kajak before. So, I just have my soldiers down here just in case for anything that could happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but you never know. Hmm. Madras is fired back against the OHF. A petition signed by 300 ulema across the empires reached the desk of the Grand Vizier. Earlier this week, as, a, as the nearing vote on the Co-Education and Unification Act is stirring up commotion throughout the nation. Nonetheless, there is no united opposition to the act as even within the ulema themselves. Many are seeing the benefits of centralized education with some even openly expressing their support for the act. The vote approaches. Oh boy. Oh wait, who's down here? Is this... Armenia exists? Is that the Bulgarian f flag? Hold on. That's Romania. Um, no, that's an upside down Bulgarian flag. Okay. Ottoman military government. Oh! Cool! Oh, you know, we need to focus you though. The Fifth Anglo Afghani War. So, this is something probably important that we gotta pay attention to. Vote on the education decree. Including the controversial Co Education and Unification Act, the Miklis E. E Mi Busan Chamber of Representatives was presented today with a wide variety of decrees and plans by the modernist OHF. As the OHF had a majority in the House after their 1935 electoral success, many are worried about the Sultan may yet interfere through the Miklis E Ayan Senate, whose members are almost entirely appointed by the pa Padishah. Padishah himself. Known for being a devout Muslim and sharing many of the conservative tendencies of the opposition, the Sultan has kept himself absent from the political process ever since his ascension ten years ago, either because of a general apathy or some whisper out of fear that what happened to Abdul Abdul Mahid II may yet happen to him as well. With the future of religious education through the madrasas now on the line, however, many expect that the Caliph of Islam to finally take a stance against the secularists. Shut it down? Ooh, I don't know. I, I Like I said, I have no idea. Authoritarian democracy? Right now, we do have authoritarian democracy. Oh. International press? What do we have for national spirits? Institutionalized Islam. Wow, minus 35% political power gain. You get 0.33 a day. Widespread illiteracy, armed neutrality, and stability of the... Oh, crap. Oh, crud. I should probably pay attention to that. Updates dynamically. Um... Wait, let's do that one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Found the Judicial Commission. Anything else unlocked? Nope. Alright, I like the Penal Code. Whilst the current Penal Code serves us well, the Grand Vizier has been enticed by reforms enacted in the Italian Republic. It not only provides us with a better modernized code, but also includes special clauses at targeting political dissidents such as the Syndicalist Movement, which seems a useful tool to the administration. Oh wait, so it says uh, Electoral Gridlock in France. That's cool. Interesting. Black, oh crap, Black Monday? No, no, no. So, failure to reform this could have severe consequences. Oh. Okay, whatever. Speaking to editors of both Constantier and international papers, the Grand Vizier has given a statement on the success of the vote and the expansion of the ministry. The decision taken by the Ottoman Parliament today is what the nation had wanted, naturally and genuinely. There's no need to look at it as something extraordinary. Showing off the lack of, or stack of letters he had received from intellectuals all over the empire, the Pasha had once again shown to the international press that the people stand behind him. Whether or not this is actually the case is left vague, and opposition papers are already describing vividly how this is an affront to the proud traditions of our state. A grand success for the Ottoman nation. Uh, I haven't told you guys yet, but the mods I'm using, obviously, are Kaiserreich, Play of the Peace Conferences, Stage Center Tool Mod, Colored Events, and I think that might be it. That might be it. Only four, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Kaiserreich. We're definitely using the Kaiserreich mod. Yeah, there might only be four. I usually like using uh, colored buttons by the time this recording. It's not available. Oh, oh, hello. Who are you? I have not seen you before. Hello. Well, then. It's kind of unique focus tree. It's kind of small. Take to the seas, war into the seas, oh, that's cool. The Russian focus, oh, hell. now that's a different photo of Kornilov, I think. Wow. It's been a long time since I've played 
Kaiser, can you have minus 79% stability? Holy crud. So the Anton Sade publishes the Genesis of Nations. Uh-oh. A journalist from Beirut is making shockwaves in the Syriat Vilayat in his romantic view on the greater Syria, free from Ottoman rule. Taking inspiration from the ancient Assyrian Empire and in return to the Fertile Crescent of old, he pleads for a nation spreading from the Suez Canal in the south to the Tarsus Mountains in the north, and from Kuwait in the east to Cyprus in the west. Though the survival of a nation consisting of such a massive amount of different ethnicities and religions seems like a fairy tale, the man only not follows closely to the Kamalist ideal of a secular state, but also inspiration from the cynicalist power seems apparent as well, with a focus on abolishing feudalism, nationalizing, nationalizing vital areas of the economy, mandatory education, and universal health care. Even though its popularity amongst the Syrian people seems rather low for now, the governor of Beirut has ordered his arrest, and the man has been imprisoned for treason against the state and instigating revolutionary activities. A troubling news, my friends. Uh, authoritarian democracy support goes down, Beirut and us will increase. How about, how about we don't do that? How about we don't... Un get increased unrest. Oh, they withdraw from Italy. Poland declares a republic. Wow, these islands not good. Kurdistan not good. Everyone's looking pretty okay. Cyprus. The Kam Samson Iktisat Congressi. I apologize if I'm butchering this. I know I'm butchering the pronunciations, but whatever. Crisis, chaos, disaster. All across the world, economists and business owners are in a state of panic as the unthinkable finally happened earlier this week when the Berlin Stock Exchange collapsed. Similar to Berlin, Constantia is on high alert for any changes to the situation as they watch the economy collapse into the ground. Nonetheless, there is far less of a crisis in the empire than many initially expected as a protectionist nature of the empire during the 1920s has formed the foundation of a structure capable of resisting most shocks in the global market. To ensure the fears of the private sector are quelled, and to outline the next four-year plan envisioned by the OHF is, OHF is uh, economic partners. A second economic congress is planned to be held in the city of Samson in the Black Sea. The Samson Iktat, the S I K, the SIC, combining both projects from the private sector and showcasing the advances of the Turkish economy over the last few decades, it not only serves as a way to calm down the Ottoman investors, but also as a showcase of modernizing Ottoman nation to the world. M Mahmoud Selal opens a SIC. That does not look good. No, thank you. Oh, China's exploding. I love it when China explodes. Low is minus 1% stability. Medium is minus 2.5%. And high is minus 5%. That doesn't seem very good for us. Oh, look at that lag. Wow. Ah, China's exploding more. Oh, what is this? Ooh, abolish the Mutasarefat at Mount Lebanon. Oh, my goodness. If you would like to read about this, go right ahead. Beirut unrest will increase. Increase integration of the Syrian Veliets by 20%. Marshal Wu Paifu backs on Qing or on Qing. Restrict Arab nationalist newspapers. Uh, implement the Turkish integration program. Settle the southern Syrian Bay Bedouins. Georgia turns her backs on Germany. The Democratic Republic of Georgia was born with a sponsorship from the German Empire to secure their independence in the turbulent times of the Russian Revolution. The Georgian, Re Georgian government signed the Treaty of Palti, a treaty that gave Germany vast economic power in the country. In the wake of the black money crisis and the collapse of the Georgian economy, Georgia has decided to declare the Treaty of Palti as an end has instead decided to take an anti-German stance, using nationalism to gather support for the government. Some of the more jingoistic in their government has even seen discussed retaking Batum from us, something to keep an eye on. Uh, a centralized tax collection of Greater Syria? Ooh, let's see if we can piss them off. So centralization of the Greek islands, 40% there. Okay. Ooh, reaches 50%, the Greek insular states can be upgraded to Velayet Vila status. And reaches more than 100%, they can be upgraded to Ottoman province status. Expand the Timar system. Separate unrest will increase, get more XP. We when removed, increase integration. Oh crap, that doesn't seem very good, but let's do it anyways. Centralization of the Kurdish lands. Increase Ottoman Gadarme. Gadamari, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Unrest will decrease, track it, will go down under occupation. Oh, we can't do that when we need more political power. Ooh. Increase integration. Oh my goodness, expand de desalination operations and centralization of the Arabian Peninsula. Holy crud. 30 political power. Oh my goodness. We get a building slot. Increase integration here. Oh man. I don't know what to do first. Oh, we have Iraqi lands. Oh my goodness. This is. Oh my god. Another one. Who do I do first? Or what do we do? We're not doing people. But who are we doing? Hejaz unrest will decrease. Well, do we have unrest here? It doesn't seem like it. Do we have this as a core territory or not? Oh, hello. This is new. Higher stu. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh, maybe I should not have played these guys yet. What do we do here? Oh my goodness, we got culture here too, and religion. Oh my god, this is EU4 on the Kaiserreich now. Um, declare martial law. It's all loyal administrators. Recruit local troops at war. Restoration democracy, that's going well, good luck, guys. Ottoman unit. Honest will decrease. Wow. Um, 
A renovation of the top Kapi Palace completed. Uh, I would like this, 50%. 30% isn't very much. When features 50% can up be upgraded, 50% is already here. We only get 0.25 a day, oh my gosh. Well, I'm not really sure. Let's just go and start with expanding the desalination operations, because that seems like a good thing to do. Renovation of the place. Oh, the former imperial residence of the House of Osman, Top Kapi Palace, was ordered in, 19, in 1459 by Mehmed the Conqueror. As the centuries dragged on, however, the sultans and their households preferred their other residences on the Asian side of the Bosporus, leading to the court moving over to the Dolmabakha. Palace, nonetheless retaining some of its more former functions, such as the Imperial Treasury. The palace was finally emptied in 1927 after the death of Mehmet VI earlier in the year. Uh, Sultan Abdul Masad II, a patron of the arts and a famous artist himself, subsequently, subsequently granted the grounds to the Ottoman State for use as a museum and art exposition. Close for almost eight years, the buildings were thoroughly renovated and restored in an attempt to once more show the splendor of the Ottoman Empire and hopefully rekindle the old Ottomanist spirit. Opened with a splendid party in the Endarun, the old Sultan himself, Presented a multitude of his own works and various masterpieces of contemporary Ottoman art to, be, to the to the gathered world press. The Sare e Sedid e Amir shines once more. I apologize, like again, like <laughs> my pronunciations of this is probably so god awful that a lot of people who actually speak Turkish are probably cringing really badly. Believe the status of the Ali Ali e Emniyat Hizmeti. The intelligence apparatus of the state has been in disarray ever since the fall of the CUP, or the COP, and the rogue adventures of Enver Pasha, taking with him a sizable portion of the Tesklati Malsusa, the special organization whose aim was to instigate Muslim revolts against imperialist powers and to crack down on dissent in the Middle East. The remainder of the force was reorganized by Iradi into the the exalted security service just after the conclusion of the Velt Creek. A lack of experienced manpower and questionable allegiances of many in its members, however, greatly hindered its performance and the effectiveness of the force has been abysmal for over a decade now. To modernize the Corps and make it an effective tool to keep our Arab provinces in check, the Grand Vizier has ordained its complete dismantlement and replacement by a new entity, the Mili Emniyat Hizmati, the National Security Service. Several close friends and associates of the Grand Vizier have, however, urged him not to take such drastic steps as rumors of a secret organization aligned to the former cup with Within the force have thus far not been quelled, and some fear that they should feel the temperature under their feet rising. They may lash out and tear down all that we have built. Modernize it. Wipe it clean. Ooh, we actually get an opera slot, which I kind of like. Hmm. Failure to reform it could have severe consequences. Oh, man. Not to take such drastic steps. Hmm. I kind of want to modernize it. Wait. Oh, crap. What would Um. Wipe it all clean. I don't want to lose political power. I really want that one, but... Well, it says failure to reform it could have severe consequences, so we'll probably want to modernize it at least. Right? I don't know. We'll see what happens. As Ottoman civil code is based on the Sharia. The Sharia. Yeah. In the shape of the... Missel. Many of the reformers have been attempting to replace it with a modernized and secular variant. An attempt at doing so was started in 1930, but the electoral defeat in 31 forced the OHF to reevaluate its position. Now that the party's back in charge, though, it seems only natural to push it once more. Failure to reform this could have severe consequences. It says could have severe consequences. Doesn't mean you will have severe consequences. Good luck in Britain, but we had the OPAD strengthened hold in the Mashrik. Mashrek. Mashrek. Mashrik. The Ottoman Party for Administrative Centralization is making increasingly large waves in the Mashriq as a variety of parties in the greater Syria region were absorbed into their organization, although a similar hand was reached out to the Arab parties in Iraq. This officer was politely declined his fear of increasing Damas Damascus or Damascene influence amongst the Arab movement and was seen as counterproductive to the ultimate goal of Arab autonomy. They are only making themselves a bigger target. More social liberalism. Stability in the region. Uh, economic depression? Ah, just a slight depression, and now we probably can't build jack squat. Not bad, not bad. Cool. The Poll Committee publishes report. Headed by Sir Felix Pohl, former chairman of Britain's Great Western Railway, the Poll Committee was tasked last year with investigating possible infrastructural expansion in the OMOJ and solve the ever-increasing financial troubles of the Palestinian railways, also tasked with improvising or improving the local stations and routes between Jerusalem, Jaffa, and Tel Aviv. The committee has now reported that substantial financial investment will be necessary to solve both con congestion issues and the connection to the Ottoman Haifa. It suggests the construction of a direct line from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem through Rishon Lezayan. 
in a junction with the Jerusalem line in the Nyanna. Furthermore, the report also criticizes the lack of investment in the port of Jaffa, which, due to its hazardous rocks, form a Apparently a strip for any ocean-going vessel. Therefore, he has requested a complete rebuilding of the harbor and extension of the railroad from Jaffa Station into the new harbor zone. Most interesting, Palestine would do better if it really lines up with the ports. And most interesting, I like railroads. I love infrastructure. First International Congress, an interesting development. And we can only get 0.25 a day. A day. Ugh. It feels weird not having an economy tab up here. Intelligence. Oh, look at that. You know what? I'm going to create the agency. I'm going to do it now, which is really weird because I normally don't create agencies in the first episode. But since we do have resistance, we could use at least one operative to help push down, like, resistance eventually. It's like, like in Cyprus, especially. So, that would be probably pretty good to... Why is it so high in Cyprus? Because we don't have enough equipment. Pius XII elected as new pope, dude. Uh, a little bit of lag, auto-saving. And Pedro Pablo Ramirez restores order to Argentina. I have not played in... Oh. We got new division, maybe? Hey, there we go, yeah. Nice. Uh, I'll throw you guys right here. Electronic, mechanical, engineering. Let's grab some mechanical computing. Awesome. And we have no fuel. But, you know what? Whatever. And I'm not going to train the soldiers as much as I would like to. I'm not going to because we need to keep guns. And we probably don't have enough guns for garrisons. Yeah, guns or, su or support equipment, which really sucks. On Qing or Qing, declare war on them. This is a template. Not bad, not great. It's 18 combat with, which is okay. The horses we saw earlier have military police, which is not bad either. The mountaineers are... Eh, that's probably the best way I could put them. We have Tank Taburu, which has light tanks on them, which is okay. But the Committee for Judicial Reform, the Civil Code we've used since the Tanzimat era, or the Masel Code, was the first codified in 1877. Based on the Islamic Hanafi legal tradition, the Code was first enforcement of... Uh, of unified law over all of Ottoman citizens who previously, according to the millet system, used their own codes. For decades, this code remains mostly unchanged and is in the eyes of still many, an ancient relic of a bygone era. As it is based on Islamic law, many of the reformers have protested against it as they feel that religious law has no place in a modern secular state. Christian and Jewish citizens who previously used their own legal system remain discontent with it as well, and have urged the government to reform it if not outright replace the data code. Mustafa Kemal, who is likewise averse to its non-secular character, has thus opened a debate into the exploration of legal reform and reformed a committee tasked with investigating possible judicial reform, consisting of the ulema, administrative personnel, and Ottoman representatives from all millets. The committee will hopefully find a solution agreeable by all parties involved and shall present their findings as soon as possible. Another step for the reformists. I love political power. Ooh, do we have... Oh! Oh, we can do stuff over here. Oh, yes. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. I guess this one auto bypass because we have economic crisis of four years of progress. I like that. Increase... Ooh. Import tariffs... Ooh, we do want to get rid of this as fast as possible, so. Economic depression, huh? Monthly population, or balance the budget. I like balancing the budget. Let's raise import tariffs. To encourage domestic industry and prevent reliance on foreign construction materials and basic consumer goods, the government will raise import tariffs substantially. Although this is a great boon for the nascent and Anatolian industry, many in Beirut, Alexandretta, and Haifa fear this will greatly damage their status as gateways to the Orient. We gotta do what we gotta do. I'm gonna cut you down by a little bit so we have less guns needed and less support equipment needed, hopefully. Hey, 0.27, we're doing better. Oh, but still not looking very good. Oh, uh, the DDY absorbs the Kemens or Chemins de Fer Oriental. Uh, the CEO have unfortunately been integrated within the DDY today after a short round of funding, but the government was able to acquire the last remaining tracks from Austrian and German shareholders in the wake of the Berlin crash. The railway company, which was founded in 1868 to build a railway line between or connecting Vienna and Constantinople, had a rough history as various wars, border adjustments, and financial crises left it broken up. Its most famous user, the luxury Orient Express, in the past connected Paris to a grand capital where it arrived in the Serkaki or Sukesi Terminal. The Valkyrie however, caused great damage to the company as the German Mitropa laid claim to a large portion of its assets in Central and Eastern Europe. Even though the Orient Express still arrives from Strasbourg, one cannot deny that the end is nearing for the imperialist grandeur of old, a worthy, worthy purchase. I love stability. And now we have point to a political power, even more riots in Damascus, instigated by the sharp economic downturn in the region and populist rabble-rousers. The Syrian people seem to be shifting the blame for the current economic crisis towards the central Ottoman government. The rapid decrease in price for agricultural produce in the meanwhile is taking a toll on the recently settled tribes of the Syrian hinterland where banditry is increasing by the day. In the intellectual center of both Syria and the Ottoman Arabs in general, Sam, a general strike against the government has been called. More disturbing, however, is increasing polarization of the political landscape in Syria as groups such as the authoritarian SSMP and the Syrian syndicalist party are growing in size and influence. The most troubling. I'm not going to click on that. Are you crazy? Syria. What can we... Oh, it's very low. 
Very low stability is good. Uh, Beirut probably is not doing so well, but this is, you know, Jordan. Or Lebanon. Nah, Jordan's right on the other side of Israel. So we got this. I'm gonna. We don't really need to do too much. I don't wanna spend too much on civilian factories, but let's do this at least basic anti partisan stuff. So, the basis of the Reform Code. As a sublime committee for the judicial reform is making progress and sitting through the. The 1851 Articles of the Massel Code. The majority of the reforms in the Academy Committee have suggested looking towards the West for inspiration. Multiple different codes are being discussed as a baseline, although an overall tendency towards a civil Swiss swivel code, both for its modernity and relatively easy application to the Empire, seem to be pre prevailing. Others have pointed to the Austrian Empire, whose legacy as a multi ethnic, multi religious empire is eerily similar to our own. A small core of hardline ulema, however, have urged committee members to not abandon the proud traditions of the Sharia Code, and have suggested a reform of the Messel instead of a complete rewrite. Swiss? Austrians? We cannot abandon our Islamic character, the Messel just needs a few touch-ups. I like the more stability! Oh, but, oh, how do we secularize it? Well enough. Ah! We cannot abandon it. We just need a few touch-ups. Oh, you know what? Oh, what is Austria here? Oh, riots? Oh, whatever. Uh, echo Turkish Accords. Abolish fool neutrality. An alliance of convenience? Relinquish European ambitions. That doesn't sound like fun. Settling old disputes. We can join the Reich's Pact eventually. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, let's do it for Swiss stuff for now. Oh, yeah, I'm not really sure, man. I'll be honest, I'm really not sure. Oof, I just want us to do well. I just want us to be a good, strong nation. So I know it's not TNO, but um, where is the development levels for a country, please? How can I decrease poverty? How can I, you know, raise army professionalism or, you know, increase agricultural output or industrial expertise, equipment? I love TNO too much. Too much, too much. Women's rights! Rights? What? Under the Missile Code, the status of women and men in our empire remains a vastly different affair. Both the men women share in the inheritance and the weight of women's testimony in the courts is half of that of one man. Uh, subsequently, women are also barred from exercising all professions, which has given a rise to a sizable emancipation movement clamoring for change as women during the Valkyrie were forced to take up a wide variety of professions and bonded together in small movements to their non-violent protests against the government. Education is well promoted by the late Vadatin, has allowed women to involve themselves deeper into the politics and kindled in many a desire to perform a variety of strictly male professions. Polygamy and the vagueness of martial law are also up for reform as they are not only seen as relics of the past, but obstruction to future reforms. Legal marriage as well as now voluntary action should be made compulsory according to the Committee for All Ottoman Citizens, no matter their religion or ethnicity. Proved? The place of woman is subservient to that of the man. Oh, crud. Well, I do like authoritarian democracy. Ooh, I mean, we are there. I guess we'll continue with that. I, I don't know. Uh, sure, why not? And that does actually help us with getting more political power, which is kind of nice. Hey, point two nine. Hey, we're still going up by point zero one every day. Man, that's a really small Armenia. That is really sad. I'm sure they got claims on our territory, though. And they can't have it. Oh, they don't have claims. Kurdistan does. Gosh darn Kurds. So, how do I push these guys down? Can I, like, beat them up? No? Oh, here's a button. Centralize authority. Release political power. Revolt risk will increase. Ooh, authority will increase, will increase as well, though. Um, I don't know. I'm going to probably screw this up. Oh, we can't do anything over there. We've got more than typical power. What is that? No, no. Uh, anything over here? Oh, man. Oh, medium. Well, that's not good. Decentralized authority. Ottoman authority will decrease. They're a villa yet. Oh, bread rice in Aleppo. As the economic situation in the realm deteriorates, the Syrian city of Aleppo has once again been hit hard by bread riots. Even though the scope of these riots remaining unclear for now, a mob was sold to Christian and Jewish bakeries and flour mills throughout the city. Luckily, the governor was quick to intervene and was able to put down the mob after reinforcements from Anatolia arrived. Eight riders were shot in the operation, but it seems like no fatalities were reported. Worrying. And also, let's see. Focus tree. We can't get through a lot of it right now. Basic machine tools. I like that. Let's grab some dispersed output. Thank you. I'm going to get through at least one more focus before we call it an episode. It's not very long. Oh, yeah. There's not much we can do here. Stability. I love the stability. Let's do that one. Originally the brainchild of Mi Midhat Pasha, the Mem Lekek Let Sand Igi was reorganized into Zarat Banksasi in 1888, providing stability and relief for farmers, still the majority of their population. The bank has been greatly expanded over the years. The prices for agricultural goods are in flux. Following the collapse of Ukrainian and German markets, the vast reserves of the bank will be used to fight the crisis. 
Well, let's see. We have that. Policy of deterrence. The Cairo Pact is defeated. Abolish food neutrality. You know what? I want to have you guys' opinions. Should we do a policy of deterrence? Which we, which we can promote, of course, Muslim solidarity, united against imperialism, which create our own faction, that's pretty cool. Reaffirm ties with the Maghreb, stability on the Arab Peninsula, cooperation with the Orient, and peace at home, at last. Or we do abolish food neutrality and alliance convenience, maybe sign the Sarajevo, Sarajevo Accords, and settling old disputes, German Ottoman initiative, research initiative, and the vanguard in the south. Which way should we go? Let me know in the comments below, but regardless... I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I guess I will see you tomorrow, where we might end up doing Uniting Once More, the Kevadat Restored, but we'll see where the Ottoman Empire's future lays. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.